Hey John, it's it's me. Let me uh I got a couple of hey little John, te technical me. things. Let me uh I got a couple of little technical things. Um, you're good. Hang on. I need to plug in one more wire, and, and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> so, so we have the entire future. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me okay, John? I can. You may not have to speak up. A little louder every now and then. We're emailing photos to you now, even as we speak. Okay. There's a lot going on here. So, I want to get some shit on the record as soon as possible. Okay, some shit on the record as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm so, I'm so motivated, I tell you, didn't tell you. I'm going to basically be talking about a little bit about what's going on, uh, about some of the things that happened this weekend. Okay, can John hold on just a minute? I need to make another adjustment or two, and then. Do I need to hang up? Um, no, no, you're good. Don't hang up. Okay. It's it's my end. I just go. He's setting up. Yeah. He's setting up. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Barry and him. Okay, on OPN on the stream, are you still getting echo, or are you um, sounding good now? Up. Audio display. Did you put my stuff back in? No, I don't know. We're going to do the interview tomorrow over here. Okay. Say, so, John, are you on a, a speakerphone or what? How's that going? I am. I am not on a speakerphone. If I do a speakerphone, you won't really be able to hear me. There are thousands of people around me. Okay. Um, so there we're in the middle of the Tidy Park right now. Okay. So we're going to try to go along with this, and hopefully. Um, are you near the statue or anything metal? Because you're a little bit distorted. I'm distorted? Yeah, yeah, it's a little uh, wobbly. Tell me, um, I just moved back to where I was. Am I better? Um, that sounds better to me. So, okay, let's, okay just go, good. let's just go with this. We're, we're going to top it out because this is how it is in the field. So welcome, OPN. Uh, thank you guys for being so patient. I was having technical problems on my end, and John's... You're working really hard. So John Jengis from uh, Occupy DC is in the park at Chicago. Um, so John, just kind of tell us what it's like there. Well, uh, as you know, today is the anniversary, the first anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. And um, at the place, at the very spot, ground zero, uh, where Occupy began. And I'm in the middle of Dukati. There are thousands of people here. The park is completely ringed with barricades. And on the outside of the barricades, police are all around. There are probably a good 500 police in the vicinity, immediate vicinity, around us, but they're staying out of the park. There are so many things going on here, it, it defies imagination. There are, uh, I think, several thousand activists really involved in the community from Occupy Wall Street, from just about every Occupy uh, location, every city around the country that's come here, they travel at their own expense. There is also, at the north end, so at the east end of the park, there is a huge general assembly going. They're discussing an action which is about to take place, probably in the next five to ten minutes. So there may be another protest leaving the park during our interview. At the same time, there are 
easily 50 people live streaming what's going on around. There are people discussing all kinds of issues. There are protesters up at the front behind the barricades facing off against police. Although it's not a confrontation, the police are facing them and the people are facing the police with signs and statements and just about every issue you can think of that is an issue that needs to be addressed, whether it's in finances, social issues, health issues, it goes on and on. There's possibly people next to playing chess. So you can imagine it's, it's quite a thing here and not even close to being a sort of piece of serious people who are concerned about the direction our country and the direction our world is going. Um, it sounds like a really positive and upbeat environment there in the park. Is that how it's feeling to you? Uh, like it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of tension when we're watching the streams. So how does it feel? What's the vibe there? Yes, you know, there is tension here because there's a natural tension whenever there is a situation where you're trying to create social and economic change at the same time. Uh, but there's an electric energy here. There are a lot of happy people. You know, they were saying that we would be here more than a year, but we've come back even more powerful, and it's evidenced by the fact that the last three days, we have generated incredible amounts of people power on the street. Today was an epic day. We had five stones. We fighting Lower Manhattan for five stones, and each stone was responsible for a certain thing. Uh, there was education. There was financial, uh, there were several other things I can't think of right off the hand. Environmental, uh, and each group was anywhere between 500 to 1,000 people. And they went and they marched to different parts of the city. So the New York Police Department didn't have to keep the people out of the roads, but in so doing, the police blocked the roads, so it's not the same to a standstill. It was fairly chaotic. It was reported in the news that Occupy is growing, uh, and it was evident all over the city that there are so many things, so many activists out here, out in the streets, trying to change, change interest for our cause. Um, what would you say, would your guess be uh, on the number of protesters today? It was hard to tell because there's so much going on all over, but what would be your estimate of the number of protesters that participated? It would also be hard to that chapter. Based on what I saw at both at Battery Park, at Foley Square, at Ducati, at, at Wall Street, and I was in all these locations at different parts during the day. Easily there were thousands of people at every location. There were people dispersed around the city. If I had to guess on a number and take away from the, the meaning of all, uh, but I'll give you a number. I said at least 10,000, probably. Usually, as much as 20,000, it starts off with the city people involved marching in different places. I don't have any way to quantify that number, but based on the number of police I saw, there were quite a few police. There were a lot of activists out of there. Well, that's, that's really heartening because um, it looked like on all the streams we were watching, you know, the attendance was good and people were positive. Do you feel like the, the actions today were successful in what they were trying to Absolutely. Absolutely successful by the fact that, that we're here. Uh, not only that, but we've got every, news, every major news media is following this and reporting it. And it, it was a very positive, very, very positive turnout, a lot of positive energy. Yeah, there were some arrests. There were quite a few arrests, actually. But... I'm going to tell you something. I believe that the New York Police Department doesn't really want to arrest a lot of people. I believe that there was some unfortunate arrest and there was things that happened on the first night we got here when people were in, well, when we marched, the very first march that I left from Washington Square Park, we marched down to Wall Street and we marched down to Chicago to reassert ourselves, reinsert ourselves in this park. When we were coming up Broadway, several police interdicted some of the protesters, and from what I could see, there was no lawsuit broken. We were on the sidewalk, 
And now it's an ugly scene, but as the days wore on, the freaks and sheep we were not here to drop you. Really, here just to inform and educate. Well, well, that was good. It looked like early on that the police were trying to provoke some confrontation, but the protesters weren't biting, and they were just, you know, um, going on about their business and not complying, but de definitely not breaking any laws. And the police seemed to be pushy and a lot of snatching and grabbing and that kind of thing, but I think the protesters responded quite effectively to that. Absolutely. In fact, we had a direct action meeting. Uh, all three days we were here, we discussed conduct during the police how to de escalate things in the crowd. Uh, the protesters were very mature, they were very responsible, and there were instances where people could easily have thought back. You know, when someone gets stuck, they want to they want to push back, but that's not the teachings of Gandhi and the teachings of Spring. And they were nonviolent. Both. And I think that their ideas are really starting to rub off here. We didn't have those types of responses because we acted responsibly. You know, there were some initial situations where people came in, and, and, I, and I'm a first witness to several of those, but they came in, people were on the sidewalk, they weren't doing anything wrong, and they were arrested for, for reasons I cannot even begin to suggest. Uh, I could speculate, but those, at the time those people were being arrested, there were about 20 to 30 people arrested on the first night. Actually, there were a lot of people from Occupy D.C. that were arrested on that first night. They were in front of Trinity Church, which just uh, hop a skip and jump from Stock Exchange. And Trinity Church has been a place where a lot of people have slept on the sidewalk over the, the months since Occupy Ducati was shut down at Occupy D.C. That's where there were a lot of arrests following the initial arrest. There were about 30 some odd arrests. A lot of those were occupied these people that I know personally. And they were just on the side like this. And you guys have been there since Friday, is that correct? That's correct. We started here on Friday. Uh, people started a meeting at Washington Square Park. We had teachings, we had direct action instructions, we had music. And we had art. And let me just speak, if I could, about what art and what music has done. Those are forms of protest. We can do them in the vein to bring to light issues in the world. In fact, art has been a form of protest for thousands of years. Um, but, and art is effectively used, very effectively used, because we have visual artists. A lot of artists have converged on the Occupy movement. They use their skills to amplify the message. For example, let me give you some of the most incredible ideas of art that I would have never thought of. Uh, a man and his uh, fiance got together and they, they were, I think they were type fighter fixing people. And he took about 10 type fighters from the 1920s, fixed them up, he set them down on the ground on platforms, and everybody got tight on those type fighters. And the theme was, my story, my, my story occupy, or correction, occupy my story. And so, folks are given one sheet of paper with the carbon, and then another sheet of paper, and they typed up a one page story about why they occupy. And there were a lot of people doing that. There were times to type the only little type of it, and it was an effective way to communicate. Another form of art was a gentleman who was a photographer. I need to get people to write on a piece of paper what is their one hope in life. And then you take a photograph um, there, of them and publish it right there at the printer, the big printer. And he was creating a photograph screen called the Street of Hope. And you'd have your picture taken with your sign in front of yourself. There was occupied school, there was music, there was poetry, there were people talking about information. In fact, there was just a heavy tax platform here like the big one. Well, you know, that, that makes me feel good because I'm really interested personally in art and activism, and I'm glad to hear there was such a showing of that going on. And I we caught some of the street theater acts, and um, 
like the Tanistoria and all that, which, which was fantastic. And so it leads me to my next question. How do you think the uh, public outreach efforts went today? Public outreach was phenomenal. We got people dressed in business suits in here and off, in here at the party all day, holding their time. People dressed in business suits. People who work in these buildings were coming down to the party to show their support. I also saw people walking down the street giving money, bringing food. Somebody delivered pizzas. There were six people bringing food. It was incredible. I was so excited to see it. It just reminded me of some of the things that I really see. Just now, getting back to the art thing, there was also free theater. Uh, there was something that we, you may know about it's called Chalky Pie. Right. And what they do is they take a big six, uh, six of chalk and they draw pictures on the ground. Well, you know, as a result of that, in L.A., the police confronted the Chalky Pie movement, the Chalky Pie initiative, and started arresting people for defacing public property. But... But the fact of the matter is, chalk is not the case. All it is is setting down a color that can easily be washed off. And we have people chalking all over Wall Street, all kinds of messages. The police did not take issue with that, you know, thank God. But some of his art, if you check my Twitter feed, you'll see some of my photos I've been streaming for the last three days. That's probably 100 photos. Some of them have chalk chalk to find that. Outstanding. Um, so, so you have a couple of other people there with you. You want to want to introduce them and uh, yeah, let's, let's see I what their like observations to, are. I would like you to talk to speak with uh, lady by the night, name of Ann Nina Letter, Ann Letter, who's a journalist and a blogger, but. Revolution. She's also a writer and an excellent photographer. She's been taking photographs, and she said some of her photographs take her lyrics today. And this is it. Hi, Mark. Hi, Ann. How are you? Thank you for joining us tonight. It's good to be here. It's great to be at the Comedic Park. This is my first time here. It's amazing. Okay, and are you, you part of uh, Occupy DC? Yeah, um, I've, I've been involved with Occupy pretty much from the beginning. I blog, and I write for the next Um, the if you want to tell us your your blog address, we'll put it up in our chat stream so people can look at it. Oh, absolutely! It's um, called Full Revolution, and the address is Full Revolution Blog. And then I've <clears throat> well, you were you were breaking up enough that we might need you to text that to me later. <laughs> it's okay, it's truerevolution.net. Truerevolution.net? Cool, cool revolution. revolution. Okay, let's see revolution. I'm going to put that in our chat screen so people can chase, chase it down. So what is, this is your first trip to Zuccotti, correct? Yeah, it, it's absolutely amazing. I, I can't tell you what it's like here. I mean, um, finally to be at the heart of Talk by Wall Street, where it all started, it's beautiful here. It's Duncan Plaza, these burning light trees, uh, forming a beautiful feeling about the park. Um, there's thousands of people here, absolutely jubilant to be together, excited, celebrating. Um, it, it's it's just an amazing energy here. And um, you do, have you been taking a lot of photographs today? And um, you have a lot of material to blog about, I guess. Oh, absolutely. I've taken um, hundreds of photographs. Can't wait to um, get to process them, to post them, um, share them, all the experiences here. Um, you know, post, uh, I took a lot of photographs of of, uh, you know, just all these wonderful, expressive individual people here, uh, for some of the conflicts with police. Um, uh, I think some of the you know, striking contrast uh, in some of my photos are um, police and security in front of uh, banks, the Deutsche Bank, Bank of America, um, Chase Bank, uh, basically our, our public police uh, guarding private 
enterprise. Um, it's a stark contrast to see it. Right. So, um, I and I actually think the contrast when when done correctly like today for instance that the the protesters were obviously peaceful the the police were obviously trying to instigate that that actually works for us because it shows the contrast between a peaceful movement and and what the oppression of the state can be like um, so I'm glad you were able to capture some of that. Now, I, I have a question because you've been working with Occupy DC for a while. So, um, you've been through all the ups and downs of Occupy like the rest of us have. What was your feeling, let's say, two weeks ago about Occupy compared to how you feel about it today? Has, has your perception changed because you were... You were I think that's an excellent question because honestly, I was pretty down in the dump. Um, you know, wondering if there was still a ghost in this movement or not. Um, there's a lot of media out there, both mainstream and um, alternative and the independent media saying Occupy is dead or Occupy is failed. And it's not, it, it's really not hard to see the point sometimes, but I've been trying to grapple with that. Um, and I, I have to say that when I come here, it's not just a feeling um, of excitement here that, that gives me more positive outlook. I would have to say that there are so many capable people, so many capable activists, uh, so many people involved, uh, not only here uh, in New York, but around the country that we have a viable movement happening. And I feel much more encouraged now than a couple of weeks ago, like you said. Um, well, I, I ask that for a reason because, you know, I, I've been kind of in the same boat and I've been struggling with, with all that. And, you know, what does it mean? Where is it going? Um, it has good days and bad days and it seems so frustrating. And then I went to the DNC and worked with a group on the ground for a week and I came back yeah. much more hopeful. And then today, just seeing how well everything went today, how well people got along the absolute exuberance right. and, and the way they came together, you know, the affinity groups were all doing their thing and it was just great, you know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is why I'm involved. So um, I was really happy. I, I have to say that there are, you know, people of all stripes here, or, or many stripes, and then there are Americans, there are black folks, there are people of very radical outlook, and there are also very moderate people, um, you know, who call themselves Straight up Democrat, um, that they don't like what the Democratic Party is doing. And I really like that Occupy can embrace them all. I think Occupy can embrace the 99%. And that's one thing that I've seen here today. I find that very true. Right, and I think it's a good point you, you made, um, you know, that there were so many different groups today, and there didn't seem to be any noticeable divisiveness. Is that what your read is? Right, right. Um, I, you know, looking back at today, I would have to say this is probably one of the least divisive days that I've seen in Occupy. I mean, for, at least from my best point, um, I didn't see any, you know, much conflict going on. And, um, you know, just a lot of unity and uh, a lot of solidarity. And, uh, you know, some of that shared vision of uh, another world is possible and bringing it out here. Um, it's really good to Outstanding. Well, you know, we really appreciate the fact that you're there and you're documenting everything and for taking some time for us tonight. Is there is there anything else you'd like to add before we go to the next person? Um, just to add on the um, Another World is Possible theme, is, you know, it's like I've been that's what what distinguishes all the people out here tonight that are celebrating is that they can intuitively know that something is wrong. And some bit of, something inside them tells them that something else can, is possible, that things can be different. And, and maybe, uh, you know, everybody else sitting at home, you know, can't really uh, access that. Uh, 
I think that things have to be the way that they are. Um, but I think what makes us so excited when we get together at God's Pie is that we can dream together and and think that another world is possible. Well, thank you for that that hopeful wind up. And I do I want to stay in touch with you because. Um, I want to talk to you offline about some of the work you're doing and how maybe we could work together because I, I love what you're doing. Um, storytelling is is my personal passion. I feel like if we get these stories and this information and these messages out to a wider audience, not only to our occupied friends and the people that watch the stream, but the world at large that will be able to build critical mass. So the storytellers and the story sharers are so important. So thank you for your good work. Uh, thank you. Um, we also have uh, Barry Knight here from Moss Pike. Steve, would you like to speak to him? Absolutely. Barry's the sign maker. Okay. Thank you, Ann. Hi, Barry. Good to, good to speak with you. This is Artister on OPN, and we're broadcasting you live. It's a pleasure to, to meet you. I've, I've seen your work and heard John talk about you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, so you've been there with the crew since Friday. Tell us, tell us what your experience has been. Well, I was actually here last fall, too, and it is wonderful to see. Uh, according to the corporate media, a lot of people thought the Occupy movement was dead. This weekend has proven that uh, anything but true. The movement is alive and well and growing, and will continue to grow until we see some of the changes that we're demanding. Outstanding. And if am I correct in, in saying that you're the uh, fellow that makes the awesome signage that we see around in Occupy D.C., and we saw a little bit of it today in Zuccotti? I am he. I've probably made well over a thousand signs since last year. Um, some of them lost, some of them confiscated, some of them weathered, but I'll keep making more. It's cardboard and Sharpies, that's all I need. Um, I always say you can change the world with a piece of cardboard and a Sharpie, so I'm glad you exemplify that. So tell us what your experience has been um, since you, you have a frame of reference to compare it to from the uh, startup last fall to what it feels like today. How do you think it's come full circle? What are, what are your observations? Well, it's really uh, impressed me coming out here this weekend. Um, the last, I've been to Boston, I've been to Wall Street, I've been to D.C. and a few other occupations as well, uh, primarily in D.C. And there was a couple months there where even I was getting a little discouraged thinking, Oh, we're waning, or the movement's gone inside. I just think it's so very important to maintain a physical presence. Um, and we've proven it here today that the movement is alive and well. There's more people here today than I saw last fall. So we are growing, and we're going to continue to grow. Excellent. And um, what's the vibe in the park right now? Do you see it uh, being a late evening? Do you anticipate any other festivities or actions or what what are people thinking about what are what are they talking about what do they want to do well well it's still i, I don't even know how to estimate the numbers here the park is filled with people um i expect hey, people might stay here throughout the night um i know there's a couple of different um activities that are teaching tomorrow as well um and we're going to get a, a lot of contacts with uh, other occupiers as well, which will help the movement grow in that aspect as well. Um, to myself, personally, it's been a long weekend for me. I got arrested Saturday. I got out Sunday night. Um, the time I wasn't in jail, I was always out in the streets doing something. And to be real frank, I am completely exhausted. So in a couple hours, I'm probably going to go try to get a few hours sleep. Um, that, that's but I a, think there will be plenty of people here staying throughout the night. Uh, that's a good I idea. I, I have to say, my experience, I spent a week on the ground at the DNC. In, uh, I'm not a spring chicken, but I, I held my own. But when I got home, I crashed and burned pretty hard. Because I think unless you've been out in the field working the 18, 20-hour days, 
into sunshine, into rain and everything, it's hard to understand what that's like until you experience it. And it is physically and emotionally demanding, but I'm really happy to see it seems to be such a positive experience in New York right now. It's an incredibly positive experience, and I, I thought I'm not the only one that's not a spring chicken. And you can actually see that around here, too. I mean, the popular corporate media perception of Occupy is just a bunch of college hipsters. But today, I'm looking at 20 seniors, retirees, veterans, doctors, electricians, plumbers, carpenters. I mean, Occupy is the 99%. We come from all walks of life, and... What's happening in this country and start to blow affects everybody. And we are, people are starting to wake up more and more to that. And I think we're really going to be able to affect some change when we get a critical mass of people, enough people that have woken up to the fact that, yes, these, what these banks have done is completely illegal, immoral, and wrong. We wage illegal wars for profit and resources. We are systematically destroying our environment. Kids are graduating to get slavery. We privatize all our public services. I mean, the problems are many. And at the beginning of the movement, that was one of the things our detractors always said. Well, they have no clear message. Well, it's not that we have no clear message. It's just that there are so many things wrong in the globe today, and they are all interconnected. So it's not like we don't have, uh, we're not on point. It's just that there's so much wrong. Talk to encompass it all in one, two sentence soundbite. That's true, and it's it's like uh, I always um, make the analogy. It's like pulling that string on a sweater, and the whole thing just starts unraveling. And there's there there are not distinct, separate problems. They are interconnected, and there are crossing points. And it's 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 overwhelming at times. You know, I find myself questioning. What can I do as one person, or what can we do as a handful of people, or what can we do as 10,000 people against these huge multinational organizations and institutions and government? And it, it always makes me hopeful to see things like we've seen today, um, because it makes me think that even though we don't know what the answer is, there is one, and we can we can get to it. So. Um, Exactly. I mean, you do not have to be a mechanic to know your car is broken. You do not have to know all the solutions. But the point is, is to get informed and get active and get involved. And more and more people are doing that. It's fair. It's, it's wonderful to see it out here this weekend. And what do you see um, going forward in the near term? Do you think we'll be able to build on, on today and gain some critical mass and that people are re-energized? I think we really are, because we have people from occupies all over the country, the world, for that matter. We've had a few people coming from different countries as well. So I think a lot of contacts are going to be made, and that will help improve the um, inter-occupy communication as well, and help grow the movement, movement even that much more. Um, uh, uh, go ahead. I'm having very much... It's very loud here. I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Oh well, well, you're you're doing good. You, I think, you know, we're we're having a side discussion in that we're pretty sure that the powers that be are screwing around with the cell phone service. But you're you're doing well. I want to thank you for for all your effort and all your work and for bringing the artistry of the Sharpie to the movement. And wish you well, and and stay strong, and take care of yourself, and let's be in this for a long haul. It's it's a great pleasure to be able to speak to you finally. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned long haul too, because uh, revolutions don't take weeks or months; they take years. So we do have to be in it for the long haul. And if I can just say one other thing before I hand you back to John, uh, we were talking a little bit about this about people may be getting involved and learning more about the movement. And one of my favorite signs that I make, and I probably made it a, a dozen times, is um, I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that. And then I realized I am somebody. When people um, lose that apathy or indifference or that feeling of despair that they can't make a difference, well, maybe one person can. But... One person joining with another person, joining with another person can. So people got to get rid of that despair and, and look at the problem. That is one big problem they have to tackle themselves, but they have to do their part and get out there and get involved. That's the one message I want to spread most to everybody, because we're not going to affect the change until we get that critical mass of people.
Well, I want to thank you for that call to action because it's it's quite true. And one of my experiences were when I was in Charlotte that the community apathy, not the protesters, but the community apathy was startling. And I was yeah. like, we, we have to change that because it's a numbers game. We have to build critical mass. And that's what we're working on. I think this weekend is going to go a long way towards that. Outstanding. Hey, let me hand you back to John. Okay, thank you, Barry, and be safe and take good care. Thank you for all your work. Hey, hey, thank you. It was great talking to you. I'm sorry I can hear you a little bit better, but hey, here's John. Hey, Mark. John here. Yeah, how, how's things? You know, this is going pretty good. We're pretty sure that the powers that be are monkeying around with cell service in your area, but it's it's going pretty well. Um, what else? Good. What else would you like to share with us or add to the conversation? Um, what I would like to say is that the Occupy movement uh, doesn't have to maintain a form of staying in parks to assert itself to give a positive message of hope to Americans who are struggling, who are losing their homes, who are having wages drop effective way to stop by the fact that uh, the median income is reported by the U.S. Census Bureau has dropped to 50,000, a little over 50,000 from 53,000, and that's in the last 10 years. So while inflation has gone up, effective wages have gone down. And not only that, people have, are having struggles with social issues like we haven't seen in this country in, in such a long time. So Occupy offers a message of hope. Our strategies are changing with, you know, the changing demands of the society we're in. We have a very strong police presence wherever we go because there's fear that we are a threat to the status quo. And it's, it's not that at all. We're not trying to threaten anything. We're not trying to, you know, bring down walls or create destruction or anything like that. We're just trying to make a change that's going to benefit the 99%, as we call it, 99% represent everybody who is struggling, and that includes the police. Police are on our side, too, when we really think about it. The other thing I'd like to say is that the attitude towards police and civil authority has to be one of embracing and, and welcoming, because I saw some very tiny charitable acts last week today, and these folks have homes you need to stay built through. I saw a kind word to converge this to some of the officers who are on the street of New York. And although it may appear like we're here against them, no, we're not. We're here against selfishness of the establishment, the banks continue to say do the decisions to let them continue to do what they do and not hold them accountable. You know, if the bank, that's the Bank of America, wants to give bad mortgages, and then just pay a, uh, a relatively small fine for the damage they've done. That's one thing. But the Security and State Commission needs to hold them accountable, make them pay for that, not only in the dollar value, but for the people who are responsible for breaking the law. They need to be held responsible for the system. Absolutely. And until that happens, the banks are going to continue to do that. Yep. Um, and I want to just you know give you props for speaking so eloquently as you did about the police. Um, I I think it's very important to hold them accountable to every standard, but I also think that that when they meet those standards, that we need to recognize that. Um, and, if, and I, I think it's a, a really generous and balanced thing for you to make those observations. Yes, I, I think that, and this is my humble opinion, and because there are many occupiers and from some walks, you know, Occupy is a large conglomeration of folks with solidarity. Some of Occupy have different points of view. For example, there are socialists out there, there are anarchists out there, there are Democrats out there, there are even Republicans out there in the Occupy movement. So Occupy has a, a rainbow of people from all walks of life in it that know that there's something wrong with both. And, and that includes the police. We would like 
people like Romney and Roe to hear us and, and to listen to us because we do have an important message. We would like to Trump and the Rockefellers to hear us, listen to us because we do really have something important to say to them. They can ignore us, but it's that great spell for the future. We would like the Shell Oil Company owners and the BC owners who are destroying the Gulf and the environment. We would like them to pay attention because we do have something important to say about global warming and the stock of carbon dioxide in the air. These are large issues that are not going to be solved solely by people walking in the streets. We're going to need cooperation from everybody, and these types of issues are serious issues. They're not things that just happened a few years ago. They've been happening for decades, and they've been being ignored. We've got to change these things around, and it's in everybody's interest, including the 1% that are paying attention and making those changes. And if they don't make the changes, then we're just going to have to convince them to make them. Well, I think that that's a really good summary, and um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out to speak with us tonight. It has uh, been great to hear the stories from the ground, and um, how much longer are you guys going to stay around? you going to stay for a day or two, or you have to head back to D.C. soon? Yes, we're going to be leaving DC, uh, for D.C. tomorrow. I, I just want to say that you guys is like a very beautiful place right now. Uh, there are still easily a couple of thousand people here. The police presence seems to have gone down to been here. They do have they do they have the rest of the large floodlights at the east end of the park, which is the top end and that's on Broadway and we know that our time here is gonna be running out soon. We're not going to have a complication this please. When they ask us to leave we'll go leave we'll go. We go quietly, we go peacefully, that's what we're all about. Uh, we're not going to set up tents here tonight. We're not going to leave a mess. In fact, there have been people walking through the park all day, picking up cigarette butts, cleaning up trash. And keeping the place actually relatively clean. We're activists. We're all about our business. We're serious about what we do. And we don't have time to play around. And we're going to continue to do what we're doing. Until the changes are made, they need to be made. Well, thank you for being such an inspiration and such an example. Be safe tonight, and I hope you guys have safe travels. And uh, give Barry and Ann our best. We'll look forward to hearing more from them. Um, I want to make sure you and I get in touch sometime during the week. I want to get Ann's information and follow up on that. Uh, but thank you so much for giving us part of your evening. I know you want to get back out there in the crowd and enjoy the vibe. So thank you so much. Uh, you're very welcome. And I want to extend a, a thankful hand to you too as well for what you do. You're providing a community service with a grassroots media, which is very important. Uh, sometimes the media does not uh, report things, and you're just taking things from the streets as you're happening. We're giving you what's happening here live from society. It's late. There's still a lot of people here. It's Monday night. These people are not on anybody's payroll. They're just here doing something for the community. They're all volunteer staff here at Occupy. It's the way we need to build a new world. So thank you so much. You have a good evening, sir, and you guys travel safely. I will, and thank you again. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye. Okay, so um, the reason I'm turning away is because i got computers scattered all over. Um, the I have a couple other people that we're going to try to get in touch with if you guys want to stick around. Um, I'll do that, but if everybody wants to move on to something else, we can do that too. Just tell me what you want in the chat. Um, or we could probably, if somebody feels like they have something they want to say, we could probably take a call or two. Um, we'll try that again tonight. But um, I have Jenna Pope um, might be able to talk to us, so I'd love to try to touch base with her. And then if we want to take a couple of calls, if anybody has any feedback, um, 
that would be great. So let me try Jenna Pope. And the deal we have with her is I would call, and if she was busy, she wouldn't pick up the call. But if she has time to talk to us, she will. Um, and I want to thank John if he's uh, listening or watching on an iPad or something, and Barry and Ann, um, good folks, and i um, really interested in following up with Ann and seeing what her blog is about and what hopeful stories they all gave, and it kind of summed up the, the day for me. Um, Peaceful asked about Lorenzo. I can um, tell you I, I did text him several times. His story, briefly, was um, he was involved in a a bit of a incident. Um, the police grabbed him and twisted his arm, but he was not arrested. Um, they let him go almost immediately. Um, from where Tim was filming, it looked like you know an arrest. As it turned out, it wasn't. Lorenzo says it's a long story, and he'll relay that to us later. But he is fine and was recharging his batteries, uh, literally and figuratively and then was going to go back out in the streets and so if he's not been live lately I suspect he probably will be um, sometime this evening because there's going to be a lot of good stories in uh, in Zuccotti uh, tonight. Um, some of our friends from Occupy Charlotte were arrested today. Um, lots of arrests but they seem to be letting people out um, pretty quick so hopefully I think John's closing statement about um, you know the police are coming t to the park, the lights and all that, but they are absolutely the protesters are absolutely not planning uh, to be in a conflict tonight. So I think that speaks well for us. Um, yeah, he's he's a good good guy, and I'm I'm glad he's safe because it was a little bit tense there. So hang on, I'm gonna try to call Jenna Pope and. Uh, Jenna Pope who was one of the people I was with in Charlotte and uh, she's on Facebook I be Jenna and she is a fierce warrior of a young woman who is, is just absolutely fearless and uh, she's a photographer um, I think we'll have some some good observations so with luck we'll be able to get get her on whoops on the phone Jenna Pope so let's see. Hold on, we'll, we'll get what? Let's see now. There we go. So let's see. I don't see. Am I getting any ringy dingy? There we go. Ringy dingy. So I don't have it refined enough where I can make the connection. Hey, this is Jenna Pope. I'm unavailable, so please leave a message and I'll call you back. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, Jenna, it's Mark on OPN. We were trying to do a live call with you. Um, so I guess you can't pick up because I know you're busy. But thank you for everything you're doing. Stay safe, and we love you. Be careful out there, and thank you for all your hard work. So um, we'll try Organizer X, and I don't know exactly where. He, he may actually be on a bus as we speak. Also, well, yeah, it sounds clear because, you know, the knuckleheads aren't jamming us, right? I kind of hated that. Cell phone service is running really slow tonight, too. Probably the alphabet. Agencies are screwing us up.
Plus, we're having bad weather. <laughs> yeah, it, where I live, peaceful is, is a long way to black vans or. There we go. It's like watching ice melt. can't multitask and have a bunch of sensible patterns. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. 508-736-5522 is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. X, it's Mark. Um, we're doing a live show, uh, phone interviews on OPN. So we thought we'd try to reach out and see if we could connect with you and get your views on the day. Sorry we missed you. Hope you're well and hope you're safe. And have a safe trip back, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for everything you did today, buddy. Well, so that was a bust, but, you know, it's busy times in New York. Um, if anybody cares to call... Let's see what we can do here. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Um, let me add another title. If anybody is interested in calling in and commenting, we'll give that a whirl. Um, that's got to move down here. If you want to call in and speak on OPN, you can call this number. Eight, 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 eight. Six seven six. That's woo. That's big, right? Um, I'll be glad to take a couple of calls, and um, you guys can say what's on your mind or not. It's totally up to you. I clearly can't carry the whole the whole show. The whole world is voice messaging. <laughs> that's that's true. You know, it's funny, right? If it wasn't for text and voice messaging, where would be where would be we be? Um, OPN call. So we'll do this, and um, we're still trying to refine this. Um, this little bit of OPN, but uh, we're going to get it down to where it's something, I think. Hopefully. What do you guys think about that? So, a little bit corny, but there you go. So, um, we only have not too many viewers, but if anybody wants to try a call in, we'll do that. would love to hear your opinion on the day. Mostly how it made you feel. Feel. I, I think, you know, that was the thing that um, kind of surprised me. I actually have been struggling a lot with the whole Occupy thing and it's an effectiveness as an agent of social change. Um, part of that is because I'm impatient. But um, I have to say DNC and then today has made me feel quite better about things. And I'm re-energized and enthused. Call from clearly to accept. Press one. Hello. Hello. Hi, Art. It's clearly. Hi, clearly. How are you? Thank you for calling in. Um, is one. I just had to try it. <laughs> Well, it kind of worked, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the OPM production team, clearly, on the phone. What did you think about today? Oh, my God. It was just totally joyously overwhelming. It was so great to see all the people out there and everybody working together and getting along and enjoying the day and the movement. And I just thought it was great. Well, that's, you know... I didn't like to see the arrests, of course, but <laughs> what are you going to do? 
Yep. Uh, Hang on a minute. I just here. lost Seems you be... on screen. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just lost. I wonder what that's about. We're being jammed. I guess. Um, Hang on, I'm gonna re um, refresh this, okay? Okay. Don't don't hang up. Oh, you don't. I won't. Yeah, That's the way that goes sometimes, huh? All right, let's put us back on the air. Okay. That's the way, you know. I tell you that. There we go. We're off air. So now let's go back on. Man, the tech's been been a pill today. Okay. So let's see. Ta -da. Ta -da. Come on. Wow. I'm glad you know all this tech stuff. I'm glad you know all this tech stuff. So, um, I'm not. Are you guys getting any video? No visual. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. So, um, so I turn you down. Yeah, you turn yourself down. So, um, in case you guys missed it, we actually have one of our awesome OPM production team on the line with us. This is clearly, and um, clearly was wondering. Uh, why don't you tell the people what you thought about today? I think we missed it because we froze. Yeah, I was just saying I enjoyed it so much. It was great to see everybody out there joyously celebrating our birthday and and everybody working together so well. And I, this is just a day of celebration to me or the whole weekend. And after this, we can get back down to business. But uh it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful seeing everybody out there. Yeah, so I'm interested because, you know, we haven't talked in a couple of weeks because I've been on the run. But um, how did how did you feel several weeks ago compared to today? Did, your, did the observation of today change how you were feeling about Occupy and what its prospects are? Or, or you have you been pretty solid or have you been up and down? What do you think? Today was very reaffirming for me, and I think I needed that. I think that uh, watching the DNC and the RNC, it was it was good to see people out there and everything. But I wasn't feeling like uh, we were doing anything to make any progress, and so today. I, I just, I felt the love, let's put it that way, and I I see that people are out there wanting still to make the change and everything, and and then just watching, uh, like I watched Nate most of the day, watching in the stream, the chatters talking still about what to do and how to do it, uh, it, was, it was a very heartening day. Yeah, I felt the same way in comparison to the DNC. Um, this was a much more vibrant and energetic day, and I was gr glad to see the crowds. I was glad to see all the art. I was glad to see the compatibility between so many different groups. I mean, it didn't seem to be ever at any time today any kind of a... Uh, you know, there was no sense of divisiveness. It was like everybody was getting along and moving in the same direction. So, and I think also we, the protesters, should give get major props for responding so positively and so effectively to the police nonsense. Um, it was really, it was a really a proud, proud day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it put me on. I've been saying, uh, oh, since you had your show the other night, the first night that we had the call-in show, I said, I feel Zuccotti-ish again, you know? I feel hopeful. I feel like we have the bicycle generators and the ideas going and the people want to accomplish. Yep. Well, I feel the same way, and I, I want to give you thanks in front of everybody for all your hard work and your support. Um for those of you guys who don't know, running the channel the way we do it is just a hell of a lot of work. 
and um, clearly is in there day in and day out. She gets us the best contacts and the best interviews. The whole production team really works hard, um, you know, to give you as good a product um, as we can present. And uh, we're trying to make improvements. We're trying to increase our scope. But everybody plays an equally important part in it. So thank you, thank you clearly for for doing that for us, and thank you for calling in tonight. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm glad to finally uh, connect here, and um, I just wanted to say I I think you and Jenna are just two amazing freaking people. The, all the stuff you do and figuring things out and coming up with new ways and ideas and uh, you just blow me away. I mean, I I do a little bit here and there. I do my part, but you guys are all over it. You're totally awesome. Really, I I just I'm blown away by you two and your devotion to the to making the world a better place. Well, thank you for being part of it. And I just want all the the viewers and chatters to know that we, you know, and we had these conversations when I was with the team in, in uh, DNC, that all of us are compelled and driven to like make these things and give out to to you guys because, you know, there there wouldn't be a, a reason if we didn't have viewers and participants. So just realize that, that the people on the receiving end all of you guys are equally, if not more important to this enterprise than those of us that are producing content. So clearly, I hope you have a good night. Thank you for calling. And uh, we'll see if anybody else wants to give us a, a ring. Okay. Thanks, Art. Bye, everybody. That was our buddy clearly calling in. And uh, while we're waiting for another call in case, in case we get one, um, I think I want to give Zena a shout out. Um, Zena worked 12 hours today with another channel, but you know we try to help out where we can. And she was mixing live video clips of uh, interview with economists and uh, people talking about you know what's next on a policy level and things which is a hard hard job. I mean, she was watching it in real time, making the clips in real time, posting it. So she really worked hard, and I'm grateful um, that she was able to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Zena. And also, you guys that are watching, I am not the easiest person to work with. I'm impatient, and I'm spread thin. And poor Zena catches the brunt of most of that because I'll call and say, here we got to test this, and I'm impatient in the chat lag, and I'm like, where are you? Hurry up, hurry up, blah, 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 you know, and she's always so kind and so generous with her time and energy, so um, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Z, for everything you do for me and for the channel, so I love working with you. Um, do we want to get any other calls, or are we going to call it a wrap for tonight? Um, probably have taken where can we see the content Z won't you put that into chat stream so um, people can take a look if they're inclined because I want to get a look at it myself because I know you worked hard and I know the topical stuff was was stuff that's right down my alley call from Tori hello hello Hello, there you are. Who's calling, please? Hey, the chat lag is terrible. <laughs> yeah, so won't you tell us your name and where you're calling from? You know my name. Well, but I can't <laughs> say it. Remember, I'm supposed to let people introduce themselves. <laughs> this is Tori, everybody, Zena. This is Zena, who I was just, just commenting about calling in to... Uh, say hi she's had a long long occupied day so tell us about what you were doing and kind of what what role you were playing and uh how you felt about it oh my gosh my brain is so fried right now <laughs> but um it was really great it was uh 
AWS Teach-In conference call, and they had a long list of economists and journalists um, talking about different strategies and um, economic uh, things and, and ways that we can change things and um, the outlook on stuff. It was very, very interesting. Um, if you look at my Twitter, um, at Zena42, there's a lot of clips. I don't know if they have all of the content somewhere, like, saved because I spent all day basically listening, stopping the recording, putting out a clip, like editing a clip, loading it to YouTube, and then tweeting it out, and then going back and recording again, <laughs> getting something, stopping it. So um, that's what I was doing all day. Yep. So did you get a chance to watch any of the streams besides that, or were you head down and working all day? No, well, the only way I got a chance to see some of the stuff was because the actual backdrop of the conference was the live streams, like it was a mirror of Global Rev. So it was like, I don't know, five or six different streams going mm -hmm. all at once with no sound. So I had no idea what was going on. It was just like people everywhere <laughs> on the screen. So I didn't get to see it. So this show tonight was really great because it really made me feel more connected, mm -hmm. um, you know, to what happened there. So, yay, thank you for doing that. Oh, well, you know, we think... Because if you didn't do this right now, I would have went to bed exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> just had no concept. And you would have been better better off for it. But, you know, John called me and he said, you know, you want to do something. And our intent was to do a video interview, but had trouble getting a signal and blah, blah, blah. So, But I think the, the audio interview was, was interesting. I'm sorry the quality wasn't any better, but I think um, uh, Peaceful Movement is going to be drafted into the OPN team as uh, uh, one of the gearheads to help us figure out some of uh, what we can do. So um, based on her, her knowledge and skill set, I can see there's something there we could use. So Peaceful, um, stand by for your draft your draft notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So thanks for your participation, everybody in the chat too, and all the viewers and everything. This is why we do this um, and get the word out yeah. so more people know. I want to echo we start that. Little, we yeah. start local and we go big. Yep. I want to echo that, that you guys are always very supportive and very patient with us. And, uh, we, we do the best we can, but we know we fall short sometimes, so thank you for your understanding and your participation. Um, it's you know, great to have you. And Z, thank you for all your work, and you know, I believe Eric owes you big time, so I'll call him and tell him about that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Take care. I'm glad to do what I can do. Anyway, I do have to run because... My son is asking for something. So I love you guys. Happy anniversary, Occupy Wall Street. Woot! <laughs> I love you all. Good night. Good night. So that's the um, OPM production team checking in. Um, Suze is probably pretty pretty late late for her, but if she's listening, I want to give her a shout out too. Thank you for her work and. I think um, everybody just should, should uh, I want to give Sue's credit because the whole call-in concept was her idea originally some months ago, and um, so now I'm just getting around to figuring it out, and uh, I think it's working out pretty good. So um, it's about 9.30. We've been on for a good little while. If there's any other calls, I'll take them. But if not, we're going to wrap up. I think it's been a good one-year anniversary. I want to give a shout-out to my teammates in the field. Um, I've been in touch with them all during the day. Um, they've done fantastic work. That would be Occupy Eye at Occupy Eye. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean over here and put all their stuff in there. So um, I encourage you guys. Here, let me move the microphone over here. Because today I have a microphone that can move, right? 
So I encourage you guys to support the streamers and you know even if you can't donate or, or anything you know just give them a tweet or a text or something um, on your channels but <laughs> need techno D of these um, but these guys work incredibly hard um, it is demanding it's grueling I know Nate was working on 12 hours when we went live um, without stopping you know I I worked with those guys in uh, Charlotte and they they just go you know TV roots media these are the people we work with consistently and this is Jenna Pope I encourage you guys to follow her um, and she's um, Facebook and I may get this wrong but it's, uh, I don't want to take the time to look it up yeah we are hello alphabet agencies we're not a threat I promise you something like that is Jenna's and uh, our friend Matt working hard in the field <laughs> yeah well you know we're just conveying information and I, I stand behind it because um, transferred some coded stuff <laughs> the let's see here um, and the other one is Tracy Williams. Let's, let's do this this is our friend Tracy who is a photographer that we worked with and she's she's another another rad photographer out there and they're fearless and in the street so you guys follow them um, watch them support them however you can you know make them cookies or something of course they you know everybody can use donations the economics of being a full-time citizen journalist are just crappy um, you know this is why I have a day job um, but they're um, you know they run off fumes mostly um, not a lot of food not a lot of sleep usually bouncing around from here and there travel expenses so you know give them props because if these guys weren't out in the field and we couldn't talk to them we wouldn't know what the real deal is think about it the um, MSM blocked at, blacked out most of this as far as most of the United States knows this day never happened but you can hear the ideas and the energy and the importance of them our challenge for all of us and this is something OPN is working on diligently is how to get this message out to a broader audience how to get the information out to a broader audience I encourage everybody to think about this um, all day I was encouraging people to call your local TV your local radio call your local newspaper give them the stream addresses May, mainstream media tends to be a little bit lazy they like things to fall in their lap if you give them Occupy Eyes feed from New York City they're gonna look they may put it up it works you know demand coverage of alternative media it's no big deal for somebody to pick up a stream like this and put it on their blog or whatever um, so I have come from the angle of I don't care how we get the messages out I do care that they're not manipulated and I'm willing to get them out on mainstream media platforms if we can get a crack in the light and just get them in there so I mean yeah you know well you know I have a neighbor peaceful 
it's a big deal ham radio guy and he he's probably doing something tonight he has a fairly good size antenna I don't know if that would matter but um, anyway thank you guys for watching I'm rambling we're losing viewers I want to wish you all a good night thank you for the support thank you for the participation stay strong stay committed leverage the media get the message out get people to watch the streams get people to have the conversations thank you all for being here and I will see you soon we may do a movie night this week so uh, stay tuned to at OPN info on Twitter for updates have a good evening thanks for watching